Hello, I'm USA Today bestselling author, storyteller, and cheeky wench, Susan Tisdale. I've been writing since I was a little girl and published my first novel in December of 2011. Since then, I've sold more than 750,000 copies of my books around the world, and I've hit the USA Today bestsellers list twice. I'm here to share tips, tricks, and advice on writing, cover art, and indie publishing in general. So grab your favorite beverage, pen and paper, and gird your loins, babies. This could get a little bumpy. Hello, 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 my fellow word slayers and, or ink slingers and word slayers. I hope you are doing well. I am, we're doing some more testing um, tonight. I am live here on YouTube and I'm also doing a live on TikTok at the same time. And I'm still learning how to set up my system so that I don't have to be on my phone and my main camera and everything at the same time. So that's what we're doing. So just bear with us. Um, I can't tell. I got a couple people. Anyway, we're talking about writing tonight. Mm. Just waiting for some people to join us. Waiting for the audience to build. And I don't know why I look so damn yellow on the phone. any of this means. Hi, Rubber Duck. We're just waiting for the audience to build so that I don't have to keep repeating myself. Give me a sh Hi, Shannon. There is a huge learning curve with this. Bernetta, how are you, dear? Hi, Christina. Oh, Christina got uh, 1,147 1, words written today. That is awesome. It about killed you? That's okay. Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> Hi, everybody over on the TikToks. Um, for those of you on TikTok who don't know me, I am a USA Today bestselling author, storyteller, and cheeky wench, Susan Tisdale, and I write primarily Scottish historical fiction slash romance. And I've been uh, published, I published my first novel in 2011, and um, I've sold more than 750,000 books worldwide. So what we do every Wednesday night, if you don't like the feed here on TikTok, you can uh, head over to my YouTube, my YouTube channel and join us there. Um, I cannot read the tiny print. Try and Kindle Vella a about a secret society. Oh, cool, Christina. I don't know what any of that means. I don't read that language. Okay. So for those of you on the YouTube, if you could like and share, I would certainly appreciate that. Share it on your social media channels. And we're just waiting. It usually takes a good few minutes for people to join us. And that's okay. Mm. I've got my coffee, I've got my tea, I don't know which one I want most. Hi everybody, hi Gigi, hi, I cannot read this tiny print, I'm trying not to put my glasses on so much, because it messes up my hair when I take it off. Hi Mimi, I, hi Runic Flame Forge, <laughs> Flick. Oh, were you following the Kelly Rodini Missy case? Yes, I am, Christina. I've not gotten any updates um, today. I have questions about it. Um, not sure. I'm going to, I'll dig into it later. Well, somebody's trying to video message me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hi, Patty Abbott. 
Oh, there's a lot of people joining. I hope you're all doing well. Tonight we're doing a deeper dive. Unmute my microphone. Can you all hear me? It's not muted. Can you all hear me okay? Yes? You can hear me on TikTok. Can you hear me on YouTube? Yes, you're fine on YouTube. Okay. Sheila, I don't know which channel you're watching on, honey, but I'm unmuted and it's working um, for everybody else on YouTube and TikTok. So, thank you. You're a sweetheart and I'll talk to you later. Um, more likes can attract viewers. Keep it up. Okay, go ahead and like it. Like the, like the live, I guess. This is, I've not really done a lengthy live on uh, TikTok before. So, just bear with me, okay? Um... <clears throat> Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate that. So, for those of you on YouTube, did you take my challenge from last week? Um, I think I gave it out a challenge. I can't remember. Okay. I don't know what to tell you, Sheila. Everybody else can hear me. Hang on. Now, let's see. Facebook. Technology is wonderful while it works. Okay. So on TikTok, um, <laughs> thank you. On TikTok, do I, anybody who's watching right now, uh, are you writers? Are you do you write? Do you create? Are you authors of you know? Doesn't matter what what genre. Um, did everyone? We had a. I think I had a challenge last week. I know I had a challenge the week before. Um. So last week we did a real we did a, a decent deep dive into scene setting. Show of hands if you were here for that. Um, if not, there. Uh, you can go back and watch um, last week's live video. It's saved over on my YouTube channel. And there is a print off on my Cheeky Wench website that uh, you can grab. Hi, Aurora. How you doing, sweetie? I hope you're doing well. Were you following? Okay, I've already read that. So anyway, um, tonight we're doing an even deeper dive into scene setting and and how uh, important that is when we're writing our stories, okay? Um, if you all want to refer back to the examples I used last week, you can. It's fine with me. Um, but tonight we're just gonna we're just gonna dig dig deeper into that. so I hope you're ready. Um, so scene setting. It is um, vital, especially in that first, chapter especially the first chapter you have to set the scene you have to let the reader know or at least give crumbs as to who they're reading about right when you introduce your character it doesn't matter if it's your hero your heroine um your bad guy so your protagonist your antagonist it really doesn't matter um who you start your novel with and lots of times I've started I've started several books with the bad guy first and I think that just adds a level of intrigue to it um but for every it doesn't matter what genre you write um you need to set that scene to keep your readers reading right so we touched on a little bit last week and I'm going to go into more detail tonight so and I think this will work across all genres um what helped me in the very beginning was I, I had these little uh, postcards, right? Colored postcards. And I tacked them up on the bulletin board above my desk, okay? And I had things like see, hear, taste, smell, feel as in textural, or feel as in feelings, and time. Okay, and when as I would write and I would take a little break, I would look up and I, it, they were just constant reminders. Have you touched on all of these things or any of these things in that first scene? 
okay? You want your readers, you want to draw them in, but you want them to feel like they're right there in that book, right? So let's say you start, you're starting the scene off on a blind date in a restaurant somewhere, okay? Describe the food, describe the atmosphere of the restaurant, okay? What kind of restaurant is it? You just don't want to say, you know, we're at a restaurant. Um, Firehouse says, my mother writes books all unpublished, but she made me interested in reading independent works. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, so um, I should have put this up on the website, but I was a little busy, and it was my goal today to do this, but my dad surprised me with a visit. He bought a new car, and uh, it's one of those Kia Sportages. Oh, my God, it was so nice. So back to the scene. So we're on a blind date in a restaurant. What kind of restaurant are they in? Is it a very expensive restaurant? Is there a piano player or a harpist in the background? Or are they at um, a jazz bar restaurant? Maybe they have a jazz band playing up there. Um, you could be at Texas Roadhouse. You could be at the corner Applebee's, right? You could be anywhere. But set that scene and give enough descriptions to your reader so that they know where you're at okay yeah shannon's right it could be an italian restaurant um it could be a little diner somewhere okay so in your head you're going to picture that scene that first opening scene you should be able to picture it in your mind what that looks like okay it doesn't matter if the date's going to go good or bad you need to bring the reader into that scene <laughs> Shannon says spaghetti. She's eating spaghetti and she spills it in her lap. Been there, done that. I have the t-shirt. Um, so that's just one example of how you can draw the reader in. Okay, so know where your scene is. Okay, know where we're beginning at. You could be in a deep dungeon on an, in an imaginary fantasy place. It does not matter. You could be in a locker room. It could be a, a sports novel that you're working on, right? It does not matter. But you still have to use all those senses. See, hear, touch, smell, and taste, okay? Even if they're not eating something, you can have, the air can have a taste. Like, um, for instance, I've just written a battle scene, right? Well, the, the smell of blood mixed with mud and dirt and sweat lingers in the air and you can taste it because it's so pungent and so profound, right? So I believe taste is really important. You don't have to do taste, but I think it just adds a level to it. Um, yeah, dungeon. So what? So let's say you're writing um, a dungeon scene. Well, what does a dungeon look like to you? Okay, what kind of dungeon is it? Are we in, you know, medieval Scotland or medieval uh, Britain? Where where are we at? Um, so that's important that you set that. Um, next, uh, what time of day is it? Right, I love doing time of day examples. Right, and it the time of day, what it looks like is also dependent on the time of year what season we're in, and what the weather is doing, right? So, um, last week I used this example. I My heroine is in a, in a keep, in a, in a Scottish castle somewhere, and it's wintertime, right? Um, smoke is in the air from her brazier, from her little fire, Oh, Shannon, you are so ornery. Get busy, Dungeon. Um, so the walls are damp. There's moisture on the walls. Even though it's wintertime, you've got the, the walls are cold. The floor is cold. There's, there's, they're damp. It's, it, there's moisture clinging to it. Um, maybe as she walks across the floor of this keep, 
um, the cold seeps into the bottom of her feet through the soles of her shoes, right? Um, maybe you, her breath is lingering in the air. Maybe you can see her breath because it's so cold even though she has a brazier. Um, tiny arrow window, okay? Let's say it's it's winter time. Um, let's say the clouds just broke and the sun is, is streaming in through that window. Well, the dust might be, you know, dancing in the, in the smoke and in the sunstream and stuff, okay? Is this making sense to all of you? I certainly hope so. So smell. What does your scene smell like? Okay? Um, if you're in a bar, what kind of bar, right? If it's a seedy bar, it, smell, probably, it might smell, might smell like cheap beer, um, piss, uh, peanuts, or... Ooh, hard-boiled eggs, right? Sometimes they do the hard-boiled eggs or the pickled eggs. So, wh what does it what does it smell like? What are you picking up? What what? And you don't have to go into great lengths. That's that's the key. Is you don't want to write eight paragraphs on what your scene smells like. Okay. For instance, let's say it's a contemporary romance and you're in Hawaii. Well, whenever I smell gardenias, it reminds me of Hawaii. It does. Um, we went there on our honeymoon, and um, the tubero tuberos, is that the right word for it? Um, just, oh, the salty sea air and, and the, the grass and the flowers. And it was just, oh, God, the, the smells from the restaurants and everything was just, it was just amazing. So smell can be a trigger for happy memories or it can be a trigger for bad memories. It depends on what your story is about, but smell is very important, okay? See, what is your, your character seeing, okay? Do we have your protagonist coming at him with a broadsword or, you know, a G-U-N, you know, a pew-pew? I have to be careful with the words I use. I'm learning that, um trying to be very careful with the words that I use. Uh, um, are they in a rodeo, right? Are they getting ready to uh, ride a bucking bronco or a bull, okay? Um, <laughs> Christina said, you're an LOL, keep it classy, cheeky winch. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it classy. Um, so smell, so imagine what a rodeo smells like. Just imagine in your mind... Imagine your scene, where you're starting, where you're at, and what it smells like. Okay? I think that's vitally, vitally important. Um, here. What is your character hearing? Could there be a grandfather clock on a wall, and the only thing you hear is that tick-tock? Are they at um, a racetrack, a horse racetrack? And so the clouds, the, the crowd is cheering and, and you've got the, the sound of the, the horse's hoofs and, you know, running along. Where is your scene set? Did you send me some scenes, Aurora? Oh, I will have to check my spam folder. I'm so sorry, honey. I will look at that. Um... No, I don't know who you are, Moon Toner. So you are, I'm sorry. Thank you, but no, I don't know who you are. Um, and thank you on TikTok for all these likes. That's very sweet. I appreciate that. Um, okay, I will check it later, Aurora. Um, so anyway, what, what, what sounds are you hearing? Are you on a battlefield somewhere? Are, are you in, again, it, you could be in, in medieval Scotland and... Uh, battle going on and there's the clash of the broadswords and and the the maces you know crushing against skull and that sound it makes when it when it crushes the skull and goes through flesh and bone um you could be in a really quiet library where there's only the occasional you know the sound of a page turning or uh, an occasional <laughs> a quiet cough somebody who's got a cough and they're trying to Disguise it. Could be that. So it could be quiet. It could be loud. 
could be just about anything. So we've done hear and smell and taste, right? And now see, what are they seeing around them? Are they all alone somewhere? That's okay. They're still somewhere and you have to describe that to your reader. Okay? So let your readers know what your character is seeing. Okay? Um, what are they what are they looking at? What 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 is going on around them? What are they taking in? What are their what are they seeing around them? Okay? Um, are they like let's go back to the rodeo. You've got a cowboy on a bull. Well, he is focused on that bull. He's not paying attention to anything else around him, right? So maybe all he sees is his hand wrapped in the leather and the the hump of the bull. But he can smell and taste everything else and hear everything else on around him. But he's got tunnel vision and he's trying to concentrate and he's blocking everything out, right? So what is he seeing? Describe. And, and you can do this in the plotting section. I know that there's lots of pansters here and that's fine. Pansing is fine, okay? I used to be a really big pantser. I... Couldn't have plotted a book if my life depended on it. I really couldn't have. But um, as my writing has improved, I've under I do understand the importance of plotting, and we're going to talk about that another night. Okay. Um, so hear, taste, see, smell, and feel. Is your character touching something? Okay, are they barefoot and there's gravel digging digging into the heels of their their feet? Um, are their shoes too tight? You can make your your character uncomfortable a little bit. You can make their shoes too tight, make them fidget with it. Okay, that's perfectly acceptable, and that will make them more endearing to your reader. Okay, let's say they've they they've got um, allergies, right? I was fighting them earlier today. I just wanted to. And there's lots of people out there who understand just how annoying allergies can be and, and how your, your nose itches and stuff. So that will make something real. Yeah, sneeze. Hi, Bobby. How are you, dear? Um, something normal, like maybe they bit their cheek last night and it's still sore. It's still sore. Um, maybe they're nervously, you know, playing with it. Maybe they're wringing their fingers, right? Do something that makes them, makes that character feel real to your reader. Yeah, I'm a hybrid plotster too, Shannon. Um, I'll, I'll pants and I'll plot at the same time. I like to, though, just picture it in my mind what the scene is and then I, I try to describe it the best that I can and uh, what's our rule don't be afraid to use the pretty words right don't be afraid to use the pretty words and that's one of my challenges for you all for next week is I'm going to give you a few words a few regular everyday words and I would like you to go to your thesaurus and find better words okay um Let's see. Uh, how many do you think you want? How many words? Do you want just a couple? Or do you want like ten? Okay. Okay. Um, I wanted to write those down before I got. So back to feelings. What what else are the <laughs> what else is your character feeling besides textural? Okay, are their clothes itchy, driving them nuts, right? But what are they feeling inside? Are they just completely ob oblivious to the world around them, and then all of a sudden something unexpected happens to them? Well, how do they feel when this unexpected event happens? Right? Are they you know scared? shitless 
Um, is your character angry at that moment? Um, are they happy? Um, hungry? Uh, maybe annoyed by a mosquito bite that they got last night? What are they feeling internally? Okay. Let's see. Um, let me go over my notes. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so are you ready to write these down? I'm going to give you ten words, and you're going to come back to me next week with um, the source words. Okay? Okay, so the first one is blue. Sweat. Grass, and it's up to you to define the word grass. Cake. Tree. Fear. Dog. Anger. Confusion. And beauty. Yes, you can make up the words, yes. You go right ahead. You can make up the words. But sometimes I think it's more fun. Uh, oh, I've got seven new messages. Thank you. Um, ten joined. Hi. Oh, we don't do politics here. We don't do politics here. This is not a political, political place. This is a place for writing. Blue sweat, grass, cake, tree, fear, dog, anger, confusion, and beauty. Thank you, Shannon. You are amazing. She put all the descriptions on the YouTube chat section. So, but you can make up your own words if you want to. I don't care. You're grown-ass adults. Okay? I'm, I'm not grading any of you. Oh, I love sweet tea. So, feeling. If, that, if your character is going through something... intense you want your reader to know that if this is an intense fear intense anger intense pain you want your readers to know that um, and just imagine yourself how you feel when you're extremely angry or extremely upset or in a extreme pain, how do you feel? Are you about ready to pass out? Do you start cussing like a drunken sailor? Um, or does your character do that? Do you break out in a sweat? Is the heart just pounding against the chest? Right? Does it feel like their heart is going to just jump out of their chest? Right? I'm just waiting for questions. Um, and while you're here, don't forget to like and subscribe and do all the YouTube stuff and, and share. And I appreciate that. I really, truly do. Thank you, Shannon. You are awesome. Thank you, Henny. I appreciate that. So I think it's important to let your readers know how that character feels. Um, each of your characters okay your antagonist and your protagonists okay sometimes you might just have one you might not have a a couple in your books and that's okay um not every book is romance but we sure do sell a lot of them um so let you need to let your reader know what those two characters are thinking at it or feeling at any given time are they smug belligerent obnoxious holier than thou attitude 
there's there's all sorts of different ways that you can describe how that particular character is feeling right and our jobs as authors is to make sure that our readers can feel that we want to submerge totally submerge our read readers into that scene into that moment into just we want them to feel like they're right there and you can do that in short novels you can do that in novellas this isn't these aren't tips just for big books like i write because i do write really big books but these are rules or i don't want to say rules but um tips that you can use across the board and this works i believe for poetry depending on what kind of poetry you write um movies um music right guidelines thank you aurora that's the word i wanted <laughs> these are just some helpful guidelines to help you improve your writing and make it better okay um i think every rule almost every rule is made to be broken um that rule of show don't tell you can break it sometimes not throughout the entire book, but there are moments when you can just tell them exactly what's going on. And that's okay. Right? Um, there's an old... In the beginning of my career, I did a lot of head hopping. I didn't even know what head hopping was until someone pointed it out to me. They still enjoyed the book. They were happy with the story and everything, but they're like, the head hopping. Well, I didn't understand didn't realize I was doing that in my first book. So I tried really hard in all my books after that not to head hop. So, and this is not, you know, scene setting, but it's something that will help you set scenes in your novel. So what I like to do, I did this especially in my book, Frederick's Queen, right? There were certain really, to me, really, truly important moments in that novel okay but I needed the perspective of my hero and my heroine so I would write the scene from her perspective and then the scene break and then the next scene was from his perspective same scene but different perspectives Okay, so that would be a challenge for you is to write one scene, the same scene, but from two different perspectives. And you will be amazed at how that helps you understand and see this scene that you're writing even more clearly. Okay. Hi, everybody on TikTok. I'm glad you're here. Um... Well, thank you. The brightness of your live will be adjusted for a better viewer experience. Well, you're making me look orange and red, and I, I don't know why, because I'm not that, I'm so pale, I'm almost translucent. Um, anyway, so try to write one scene from two different perspectives to see if that does not help you set that scene better. Okay. And I just think, I just I just love doing that. And sometimes I'll write the scene from two different perspectives, but I'll only leave one perspective in the book because maybe that's all I needed. But it helps me set that scene. I hope this is making sense. If you've got any questions, just write them. Um... Hmm. I don't know what this is. Any of this. Ooh. 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 <laughs> anyway. Hi, beautiful. Hi, Kristen. Hi, everybody. So anyway, is I hope this is making... um. 
Yes, Aunt Aurora says, I noticed you did that with Black Richard's heart switching scenes, and you liked that. Well, good. I'm glad. Because there are just times when you need to know what... I mean, these two people are interacting. I especially love doing this for love scenes. When two people are interacting, especially intimately, okay, it's nice to get both perspectives, okay? Yeah, they're probably both having fun, you know, depending on what your scene is about. But, uh... TikTok finger is getting tired. Oh, Shannon, you are too funny. I love you. You're adorable. <laughs> so anyway, um, setting that scene, switching scenes, um, sharing the different opinions from each of your characters, I think is vitally important and it will really help you understand what your scene is, is, is about. Are we taking lots of notes? Do you have questions go ahead and, and type the put your questions in the chat i'll be happy to answer them i will i like answering questions now next week episode is titled what are we doing next week shannon oh who in the hell does your hero think he is we're gonna be doing a deep dive into character building next week yep and I love character building. I loved this might take a it might take a couple weeks to do that one because there's a lot that I think you need to pay attention to when you're writing your characters. And I will just give you my tips and tricks for how I do it. Oh. How many likes do we have on this one, Shannon? It's going to be so much fun. It really is. I think so. That's one of my my favorite, favorite things to do is to uh, develop characters. And then the week after that, yes, I'm going to have a piece of licorice. I know you really shouldn't eat something while you're live. But I need a piece, piece of licorice. I'm a red vines girl. Oh, Shannon, I was just asking how many likes we have on this video. Yes, I love red vines. If they don't have red vines, I'm not eating licorice. I'm not a Twizzlers girl. likes on TikTok. What the hell? Wow. Let me guess, Shannon. Seven, 1,799 rears. <laughs> mm. Yes, head hopping's fine. You can do that. Julie Garber does it all the damn time, Christine Alaska. And that's, again, another rule that I think you can break. Just my personal opinion. No, I've never read Annette Lamb. So anyway, um, yes, head hopping is acceptable. You can do that, right? What I'm talking about are those scenes that are just so integral to the story itself that you really want to get both perspectives from each of the characters that are in that scene. Ha! Huh. Yes, but she's Julie Garwood. I'm sorry. Yes, she is Julie Garwood. But if she can do it, so can we. Okay? She just does it really, really well. Okay? So, if you want to head hop, head hop. I don't care. But there are times, there are moments in my books when I have to set that scene... And show it from the two different perspectives. <laughs> oh, I love sweet tea. This is my favorite cup. My husband calls this my sippy cup. It's by Reduce. 
$100 cheaper than a Yeti and works just as well. And no, I'm not a sponsor. I just like talking about my sippy cup. Thank you to all my new followers on TikTok. I appreciate that. I do. I don't have a live goal. One point nine thousand likes. Shannon, you're awesome. Um, oh, you're writing in first person. The only time I've ever written in first person, Christina. Um was for my novel that was originally titled The King's Courtesan, which I retitled The Edge of Forever, and there was a lengthy reason why I did that. Um, it's hard to write from first person because you want to know what's going on with the other characters, right? So that's, that's why we struggle sometimes. But sometimes a story just has to be told from the first person perspective. And you can you can describe what when you're writing first person and let's say you're having an interaction with another character, you can still describe what that character is feeling because a lot of times we will make we will have expressions that coincide with our feelings. So they could be scowling because they're mad or they could be, you know, their brows furrowed and they're like, what the hell? Or big smile and bright eyes. And so you can do that. It's it's totally, totally doable to describe what that first person point of view, that character is seeing from the other people around them. And it is a struggle to get the words out sometimes doesn't matter what point of view you're writing from, right? It can be a struggle. Do we have other questions? I'm trying to see if we have... I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. I don't know who this is. I... Itsy, my day's going very well, dear. Thank you for asking. Ambrosia is new. Kate Robbins, hi, honey, I didn't see you there. Oh, my God, if you all have not read Kate Robbins, seriously, go to Amazon right now and just pick a book, any book. Right? Just pick one. Doesn't matter which one. You are going to love her books. She is a fabulous, fabulous, talented author. And I'm not just blowing sunshine up her skirt because I love her. Um, but yeah, Kate Robbins is phenomenal. Roberta said, sadly, every time I sit down to write, it's always in first person. And that's okay. That's okay. A lot of really great books are written in first person. Now, some people don't like to read first person. And then you've got another group that only reads first person. Right? It's okay. You write what the book tells you to write. And I think each book will tell you what to write. No, the book won't write itself. But it will tell you its story. Christina says she thinks it's easier to change first to third in edits. Yes, the muse is going to tell you what your story is about. And sometimes we can get knocked down drag outs with the muse. So, perfect example. Dream in Bohemian Studio. Hi, Dream. So, sometimes you do have to fight with the muse. Okay, and I'll give you a perfect example. Wee Williams a woman. Okay. Now, for those of you who haven't read my work, Wee William, fun, fun book. And Wee William's not Wee. He's almost seven feet tall. At the end of that story, I don't know who's read it, but I will tell you, at the end of that story, Nora died. 
And and I wrote that death scene, and it was a gut wrencher, and I was bawling. And then I thought, my readers are gonna freaking kill me. They are gonna be on my lawn with torches and pitchforks, killing me, because damn it, Wayne William needs to be happy. He needs happiness. So I did rewrite the ending to give him his happier ever after. Heart flutter, William. Yes, we William. We everybody loves we William. Yeah, Christina says her muse is a fickle bitch. <laughs> Mine can be fickle sometimes too. But I couldn't do that to E. William because everybody loved him so very much, right? He was just, he's just loved by so many people. You would have killed her off? Oh, you would have, you would have been on my lawn. Yes. <laughs> So um, there are times, and if, if, you know, and I still have that, I still have that death scene somewhere. Um, you can save it. Um, was it when she was like passed out half dead? Yes. Yes, at the end. Yes. Hi, Kirk Patty Cake. I don't like to torment, well, sometimes I torment my readers. I do. Can't help it. Yeah, she was prego, so I couldn't have her. How are you doing, Kirk Patty Cake? I don't know if I should call you that or your real name. While we're here, so. Anyway, yeah. Don't, you know how they say don't kill the cat? Well, don't kill a favorite hero's happily ever after. <laughs> right? Because you will piss off a lot of people. Now, there are times. Okay. All right. I'll just call you Ian because that's it. easier to say than Kirk Patty Cake. Um, so, there are times when the happily ever after is, I don't want to say not so happy, but not, how do I want to put this? Have any of you read my my book, The Edge of Forever? Yeah, you got to have the happily ever after. You just have to. Um, but happily ever after maybe is not what your readers expected because you seriously could not give it to them in that story. Okay, so I get lots of people who, who would tell me, I mean, I've got so many five-star reviews on The Edge of Forever. They absolutely love that story, but they will tell you, anybody who's read it, they will tell you that you need a box of tissues. And I wanted to give them their happy ending. I did, but I had to give them a different happy ending than what the readers wanted. Because these were... Well, Charles was a real life king in in you know Tudor Italy, and he was married to someone else. And uh, I couldn't, but it was still, yeah, that's a heartbreaking book. I cried over that one. Yeah, I love happy endings too. I just, so you just got to have your happy ending. But sometimes, depending on the story, it just isn't possible. It just isn't possible. Oh, he would have emailed me with harsh language, yeah. So, don't kill the cat. And don't take away your hero or heroines happily ever after. Because that'll piss off readers. And you don't want to piss people off. Now, it can be done. It can be done. But you have to tread very, very lightly. Holy crap. 2.1 thousand likes on TikTok. That is so cool. So do we have any more questions? I realize we've been at this for almost an hour. We've talked about a lot of different subjects, mostly about scene setting. 
and, and scene setting is vitally, vitally important. Um, oh, Christina, you've been with me forever. You're still waiting for Elise and Sir Daniel. I think I even almost, you did. Elise was sweet. She might get her own story. I've got so many stories in my head that, okay, show of hands. How many of you have so many books in your head that you would pay good money if someone could just figure out a way to like stick a gig stick in your ear and download all the novels that are in your head? Oh, that would be fabulous. Because I have a lot, a lot of novels in my head. I do. I have so many stories and in different genres. And sometimes they're all screaming at me at once and, and it's just really, really hard to keep up with all of them and to focus on just one. So do you have any questions about scene setting? The importance of see, hear, taste, smell, feel as in textural and feel as in um, feelings. Those are always vitally, vitally important for any scene setting. I don't care what genre you write in. And again, you don't have to take 25 chapters to describe the sunset. You only need one, maybe two sentences. That's all it takes. But you want to use the beautiful words. Okay? Oh, thank you. Christina said, I think your description of the hole Nora was stuck in was fabulous. I actually can smell it and feel the damp. Yeah. But I didn't take 25 pages to do that, did I? It was just, you got to choose those words carefully. Use the beautiful words. Don't be afraid to use the beautiful words. Instead of just saying it was, you know, a purple sky. Well, that's so fun. Let's talk about that purple sky. Right? Was it, was it indigo or lavender? Was it a? dark purple or was it a pale purple if it was a pale purple use the word lavender okay or if it's red don't just say it was you know streaks of red across the sky that's just use, use intense words but like crimson or blood red or or you know just go to your thesaurus and look for different words for the color red and use those it will just, it'll just endear you to your readers all the more, I personally think. And again, it doesn't matter what genre you write. It doesn't matter. I don't care what genre. <coughs> I don't care if it's um, fantasy or sci-fi or paranormal, historical, westerns, contemporary, um, biker gang, baseball players. I don't care what genre you, it is. You have to set that scene. You want to keep those readers. You want to grab them and hold on to them until the very last page. Right? That's the goal. And we, we sh I had examples last week. And for those of you new, you can go to my website and, and download them and look at the different examples. And yes, they were extreme examples. But um, sometimes you need an extreme example to get your point crossed. Hey Shannon, welcome back, honey. Um, so just remember, and and depending on where you work at, where you write at, okay, get little post-it notes or postcards. You know the little note cards. Do I have any in here? You know what I'm talking about? The index cards. And on each individual one, just write one word: see, hear, smell, taste. Feel, textual, feel, internal feelings. Time, again, time is so important. What time of the year? What time of the day? Is it autumn? Are they outside walking and then the, the, the leaves are crunching under their feet and that smell of, of decaying leaves? Some people love it. I love it. I love that smell. I love the smell of autumn. Okay, are the leaves falling off the trees? Is there just one hanging on for dear life, not ready to quite give up summer yet? There's all sorts of ways that you can describe the time. How is the, if you're inside, how's the sun shining through? Is there no sun? Is there a thunderstorm going on outside? Well, what kind of thunderstorm? 
Okay, is it violent? Is it is the thunder and lightning so loud that it's shaking the house? Or is it a gentle roll of thunder in the distance? Perfect example, last night I was reading one of Terry Maggart's books. I love Terry Maggart. Oh my God. It was Backyard Starship, book one. And there was a phrase that he used about when the, the, he, the rain stopped, it rolled off to go bother somebody else in another town. And I just thought the way he had written that, and it's on my, I should have highlighted it, but I didn't. But it was just, it really struck me that that was, I'd never thought to do that, to say it, you know, the storm rolled away to go bother people in Topeka or whatever, however he'd written it. It was just perfect. It was just one sentence and it was just a perfect sentence. And I really enjoyed that. So, love his books. He's a really good, really fine author as well. Yeah, maple cloves and pumpkin spice. Not a huge fan of pumpkin spice coffee. Don't come at me. I don't like Starbucks, okay? I just don't. I, I'm i not a flavored coffee person. I'm not a mocha latte frappuccino low-fat non-soy guacamole coffee. I'm just not. I just want a good, strong, not bitter, cup of black coffee. That's all I want. That's all I want. I don't want all the pumpkin spice nonsense and, and all that. I have nothing against everybody else who loves it. That's fine. Okay, I just can't drink it. Okay, and I don't like their I don't like Starbucks regular coffee. That's okay. We all have differences. We all have things we like and dislike. I'm sure there's lots of people going. Oh, you don't like Starbucks? No, I prefer Tim Hortons. <laughs> so, do you have any more questions? Because we've been at this an hour. And you can always go back and rewatch the video. Um, but remember, you know, the scene setting is, oh my God, so very vitally important. And you can go back and look at those examples that we used last week. 2.4 thousand likes on TikTok? That's amazing. Oh, now I love hot cocoa. I do, but I don't want hot cocoa coffee. Now, the only exception to the rule, and if I cry, please forgive me, but once a year, on the first snow of the year, I have International Foods coffee, the French vanilla. I will drink a cup of that because... My mom loved that stuff, but it was so expensive back then, back in the day. Oh, I can't believe I'm going to cry. I'm sorry. I miss my mom so much. God, I miss her. I miss that woman. Oh. Mm. So once a year, I do, usually on that first snow, I will make a cup of International Foods French Vanilla. And I will sit on my sofa and I will look out at the snow and I will just think of my mom. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, she was one hell of a woman. Good God. She was. Who did she have a life? Anyway, so enough about that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm an open book. What you see is what you get. So do you all have any more questions? Yeah, I'm not even dancing. That's right. Grey Poupon. Yes, the Grey Poupon commercials. Do you all remember Grey Poupon mustard? It was the fancy stuff. Um, and there was this cake. Not the Pepperidge Farm one. Um, Sarah Lee? No, 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 no. That wasn't it. There was this cake that had like this like crunchy chocolate on it. I don't remember, but that was like $3. And back in the 70s, $3 for a cake? You've got to be kidding me. Um, but the other day, I'm not going to mention a company name, but I went to a new cookie store here in town. And I was going to get myself a cookie. My grandkids a cookie. And my daughter was with me. And I thought, well, just we'll just go in and get a dozen cookies. 
these cookies are $4.99 a cookie before tax. I said, for $4.99, it better be the size of my ass. And these were just regular sized, you know, these weren't great big cookies. And Emily looked at me and I looked at her and we both channeled my mother at the same time and said, no. <laughs> and so we left because we're not, we're not going to spend $30 on cookies. Come on. Do you know how many batches of cookies I can make for $30, especially when I buy everything in bulk from Costco? I can make a hell of a lot of cookies. Oh. Is my mascara running? I hope my mascara is not running. I hate that. Oh. Anyway. Do you all have any more questions? I'm good. Your Royal Highness. Oh! Your Royal Highness is here on TikTok. <laughs> You want fudge now? Oh, I have the best fudge recipe. The absolute best fudge recipe on the planet. Okay. A can of sweetened condensed milk. I'll have to put the actual recipe in the, the description. But it's a can of sweetened condensed milk. Um, I think it's two cups of chocolate chips and, and half a stick of butter. Five tablespoons. I don't remember. And you put it in the microwave. Right? And then you put it in a buttered dish. Oh, seriously. This fudge is so smooth and rich and creamy and just, it's, oh, the best, 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 best fudge ever. Um, I'm good, Your Royal Highness. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Author Rhonda. Hi, Author Rhonda. There's so many people here. Thank you all for the likes. I really appreciate that. Ooh. One new follower. 473 views. That's really cute. cool. Sweet. That is awesome. Anyway. Yes, I'm one of those squirrel kind of people. It's the winch whisk now. <laughs> Oh, Bobby, I love you. Well, if you got some chocolate chips, a can of sweet condensed milk, I will send you the recipe. Just go, I, I forget, just go to allrecipes.com, homemade fudge using sweet condensed milk, chocolate chips, and butter. That's all it is. It's three ingredients. And then when I make mine, I put that stuff in the freezer so it sets faster because I hate waiting for chocolate. <laughs> I hate waiting for fudge. Y'all are so sweet. Thank you all for the likes. 2.6 thousand likes. That is so cool. Thank you all so much. And I don't know if you shared or not, but that would be nice. Um, and I don't know how to save a video here on TikTok, if anybody knows. That would be awesome if you could share that information with me. Okay. Yeah, put that fudge in the freezer so you can eat it faster, right? Yeah, sweet condensed milk. Oh, it fails. Oh, Shannon, I'm so sorry. I will make you fudge. I will make you fudge sometime. You will love my fudge. I don't make it any other way anymore. Now, I do like to put nuts in mine, but nobody here likes nuts in their fudge, so um, never fail fudge. Always fails for me. <laughs> oh, good golly. So is everybody ready to write tonight or tomorrow are you excited about the prospect um have you found sprinting partners yet how many of you have found sprinting partners that you can write with on those days when you just kind of need a little extra motivation because we've discussed that too i think sprinting partners are vital um oh yeah the kind with marshmallow fluff now i'm gonna have to go make a batch of fudge dang it so are you ready to write are you in, am i is anything i'm saying clicking um, does it make you want to write? Because that was one of my goals, not just to help you want to write. I'm sorry, not just to help you write better, but to also give you a little bit of inspiration to actually sit down and write. Oh, good, Aurora. I hate the editing process. Um, it sucks. <laughs> Shannon, I love you. What the hell is Palooza? There's all this stuff going on on TikTok, and I don't know what any any of it means. 11 to 12.30, accountability group. Oh, sweet. 
you got to push through it sometimes. You just really do. But you know, there are times though. Now I'm gonna. I'm, there's a caveat to that. Sometimes, and and I made them this mistake once with one book, and that was Asa. And I pushed through. And I just wrote the book. And you could tell. Wasn't my finest writing. Wasn't my worst. But it wasn't my best writing. And I, th and I had re readers call me out on it. As they should have. Um, so if you're not. My recommendation is. If you're not feeling. Go ahead and just sit down and write. It doesn't matter if it's crap or not. But. If you can, write something else. Change it. Change. Just go write a different book. Because if you're not feeling it, if you're not absolutely 1,000% in love with this novel, then your readers aren't going to be in love with it either. Okay? So, you, I, I, I truly, sincerely believe that your readers can tell if you loved writing the book or not. Yeah, yeah, if you can switch genre, if you get burned out, just switch genres. There's there's nothing wrong with that. Oh. Christina's going to look at her scene setting tomorrow. Yay! And again, you can go print off those examples off of the website, so. But it is 8:10. I've kept you all long enough. Um, we'll be back Friday night for Friday Night with the Winch, our Cheeky Winch Hour. Um, what did Bethany name it last month? The Cheekier Winch or something like that last week, last Friday night. I, I forget what Bethany called it. But we're going to be back at it Friday night. Um, if you have any questions, just email e email them to me at susan at susantisdale.com. And uh, I will answer those questions on Friday night. That's right. Um, Aurora says she finds it helps with writing. I'll get fresh ideas and I'll swap back to the other story. I find it keeps ideas fresh. Yes, I agree with that wholeheartedly. But anyway, I'm going to sign off so you all can go get to work and, and use those beautiful, beautiful words. Okay, and remember the one thing, you can't publish blank pages. So anyway, I hope you all have a great week, and I will see you Friday night here on my YouTube channel at 7 o'clock Central for our open mic night um, where I just answer questions from everybody. So I love you all. I think you're all awesome, and just have a beautiful, blessed rest of your week. Bye-bye.